I'm probably William Gallagher. And yeah, I'll explain it out later. But this is definitely the Apple Insider podcast. Our sponsor this week is certainly ExpressVPN. And joining me is unquestionably the best person to be talking all things Apple with, Wesley Hilliard. Or is he? Wes, are you you? I'm not sure most of the time, but uh, definitely getting through each day pretending to be somebody named Wesley Hilliard. You do actually sound like it. That's how imposter syndrome works. Oh, that's true. I've actually solved imposter uh, syndrome. I've realized I am rubbish. So, you know, there's no doubt about it. And (laughs) once you've accepted that... You can get on with these things. Um, I should say, by the way, before we get any further, Apple Insider Plus this week. I love this one. Apple Insider Plus. It's about the very best of Apple's design over the years. Uh, well, actually, as soon as I say that, means at some point we've got to do the worst of Apple's design. That could be fun. But Apple Insider Plus is the extended ad-free version of the podcast that you can subscribe to through Patreon or Apple Podcast subscriptions. And today, all about the pinnacle of Apple design. But in the meantime, I've got this thing of us questioning our identity, and this isn't philosophy. Plus, would you like to explain? Because earlier on this week, I you know, UK time versus US, I woke up and found I was part of the subject on Apple Insider Plus. What were you doing to me, all of you? Part of the subject. Oh, uh, so are you talking about the the unofficial apple web yes thank you i i know it's t-u-a-w but i can never hold it in my head what it stands for but yes to where to to whatever they call it it's an ancient uh website uh actually it's funny because apple insider is a bit older but um just i looked into the history of this just because it was uh i thought it was interesting so around 2003 um so right after the uh boom i guess the the oh the dot com burst the bubble all that stuff yeah there we go dot com so after the dot com boom of the of 2000 uh everyone needed a website everyone had a website and funny enough um we ended up with blogs becoming such just so important i mean apple insider i think started 1997 and uh you know we weren't the first but we were one of the first uh kind of getting on the scene talking about apple specifically and uh that's where we kind of started our core audience and have grown from there um in 2003 this company called weblogs uh was created with backing from um gosh mark cuban right people know that name that's uh one of those big money investor guys he's done a lot of stuff Mm -hmm. go look him up um so so but it's just funny to think that mark cuban was behind uh financing uh, this company because uh, it created several brands including Engadget if you've oh, ever, yes, ever heard of that yes, one maybe well. um, but the unofficial Apple weblog was one of their more popular ventures uh, under the blogiverse and it started in 2004 and uh, yeah a lot of big names uh, that in the Apple uh, journalist technology thing industry Got started there, uh, namely Christina really? Warren. Uh, we've seen uh, Scott McNulty. Um, there's multiple, just name after name. Just go look through the list. It's kind of wild if you think about it now. Who all's in there? But um, yeah, that operated until about 2015. But if you guys have been paying attention, weblogs belong to uh, AOL, which belong to Yahoo, <laughs> which belong right. to Verizon which got sold to a private equity firm in 2021. 20, uh, and finally, after this long shuffle of passing these companies around, um, the unofficial Apple weblog, well, it was officially ended in 2015, by the way. But um, I, it was it, it was definitely one of the good websites. It's just they, these the way these things go. In 2015, I think it was under Verizon, and that's when they created Oath uh, from Yahoo or whatever. Um, and there's still a Yahoo for some reason, but there's no more uh, TUAW. But anyway, long story short, we get to today, and that private equ- equity firm sold some of its properties from weblogs to something called, well, it's an ad agency called Web Orange uh, out of China, I believe. And they th- saw an opportunity. And that was, let's take this good domain, 
Um, let's grab all of the names that's ever existed. Uh, <laughs> some that didn't exist at, at TUAW. We'll get into that. Um, turn them into these zombie-like profiles using AI descriptions uh, and AI-generated images. We have uh, Brett Terpstra, uh, Chris Ulrich. They're just the names go on, and the profiles are hilariously bad. But now there's just thousands of articles generated under Christina Warren's name. Um, she hasn't worked there since 2009. But it's making it look like she's still an authority there. And this is all a big SEO play. They want to use these people's name power because they're so they're big in the industry these days. They're going to use these people's name power um, as authors, as bylines on the articles to get it pushed up uh, the SEO lines at Google. Because Google would see these as trusted authors and show their results first. So it's just this big SEO play. Well, that is if Google still worked that way. They kind of ruined the internet with AI. Uh, SEO is kind of, um, quote unquote dead. Now we're kind of trying to figure out if it still exists, but that's just a whole different story. But in any case, uh, just this f terrible, fraudulent, stupid attempt to revive a thing f full of fake images and fake people. Um, it has since been changed, uh, to where they all have just these basic names like Beth White and stuff like that. Um, and the, the terrible, uh, Profile pictures and stuff are still there, but I, we did notice uh, in our perusal that someone named William Gallagher worked there, despite William Gallagher never working at uh, TUAW. So, what do you have to say about that, William? New career change? This is quite a striking picture of you too. I've never seen you quite so careful now. Soulless. Oh, okay. and oh, oh, I was yeah. enjoying the soulless bit. Uh, okay, <laughs> thanks. Um, I was thinking he looked a bit confused, and he's next to a bio. What made me sound like the boring, most boring man on earth? So maybe the bio is accurate. I'm not sure, but the photo is definitely wrong, and that's the whole reason. I'm into this. I mean, you hear people ripping off work. This does seem to be ripping off on a massive scale. But reading Apple Insider and seeing me listed as not working for somewhere else, it was a bit of an eye-opening thing. And honestly, I mean, I'm part of the Writers Guild here. I've been talking with the Guild. Is it something they could get into? And fortunately, as you say, um, all the names have now been changed. So I'm not sure what I've been renamed as. John Smith or something indistinguishable like that. No offence to any John Smiths. Uh, there it's funny because uh you would pick john smith the uh one of the main protagonists of pocahontas who invaded from england uh, i was thinking i'd pick john smith because that's uh <laughs> the name the doctor sometimes gives in doctor who look at us steeped in culture i i bet this boring guy on tuaw thing you didn't know any of this stuff you know that's what you tune it i can't until you say that about big names and christina warren yes i get that um i just thought they grabbed everybody's names i was looking to see if you were there or not i appear to have been the well, only one from apple insider and i can't really imagine what it's got to have been random um well i think it's uh your name power you but, you you are definitely an a strong seo uh term so standing just, just because but but what's so weird is they didn't use your uh goodies like they didn't include your wikipedia page or your uh writers guild fame so um I, i'm not i'm just not sure what their play was other than may, maybe they just found like they just looked up apple journalists and came up with the top ones and ended up with a bunch of tuaw people by happenstance mm. but william i just want you to think about this for a second if you really sit down and think about it we're all tuaw writers now i mean <laughs> is, that's how ai works correct right. so i don't think it's I don't think it's incorrect to list anyone as yeah. an author on TUAW. The whole internet is But at least author. I'm getting paid the big... But No, okay, no, I'm not. I see you. Fools down there. <laughs> Royalties You're are right. on the way. Yeah, let's not wait for those. Okay, I got it. The whole point of bringing this up is it is hilarious, but also don't visit their URL. Don't give them any more SEO strength. Let's hope they just die in a fire and uh, this tragic zombification can just go away we would prefer it not start showing up in google search results and start having to explain to people that not only is this website garbage but it is stealing from the rest of the internet because it didn't just steal people's names it's stealing content there is clear representations of content from apple insider nine to five mac uh even the verge there's just clear snippets and articles and photos just being used that's just stolen from everywhere it is such a terrible job 
and there's no way to combat it other than don't visit them. We didn't include any links no, to their sure. website. Don't go looking for it. Just let it let it. Go. And I would just like to say, please don't go looking for me on there because I am vastly more um, handsome, rugged, younger. Or you're never going to check, are you? So I could just say all of that. It'd be it safe. might be in the show. It, it might be the show art for this chapter. Um, okay. Um, let's move on away from bad use of news to good use of news because this is actually i'm i'm a little surprised to say this but i think i am particularly interested in at the moment is the apple watch series 10 because suddenly we're getting loads of rumors and they seem contradictory i think series 10 or series x if they're going to call it that the 10th anniversary one for so long it's been this is it this is going to be like the iphone 10 radical change in some way but most recently it seems like it's going back to yeah no just a another tiny update um yeah some some would even call it the apple watch series twitter oh oh that was harsh and unfair and i'm going to steal it for later thank you okay um (laughs) i thought uh apple watch series 9s might be possible but i prefer yours to be fair well i we've seen a few good rumors here though um Bigger screens, as always. I don't mind this. I know some people are like, no, make them, you know, keep them small. Um, I think there should be a big, bigger, biggest uh, model going forward. And I know that the Apple Watch Ultra does exist, but I think that maybe a biggest uh, regular Apple Watch needs to exist. Because honestly speaking, uh, the Ultra is kind of ugly. It's very utilitarian in its design, and that's fine. That watch needs to exist, but... I still haven't bought an Ultra because it still doesn't come in black. <laughs> if it ever does come in black, I'll be very tempted. But, um, at the, again, is it for me? I don't know. If Apple has a 50 millimeter Apple Watch Series 10 and a 50 millimeter Apple Watch Ultra 3, and they're both in black, I will have a hard time choosing. I will say that much. Um, but we're slowly embiggening these watches, <laughs> and I, I wonder what the limit is because uh, we could get to the point where we have um, – these arm computers, kind of like uh, if anyone watches Futurama, Lila wears the uh, often joked about uh, arm computer that does nothing <laughs> and everything, uh, depending on the episode. Um, but it's basically an iPhone strapped to your arm at that point. And I know the Apple Watch is still far away from an iPhone, especially because it's a square. Uh, I just wonder what the limit is. How, how big can it get? And is the bigness related to chipsets and cooling uh there are some people's assuming like oh maybe we'll get a chip in there for apple intelligence <laughs> no okay. don't don't count on it i i iphone's right there it, and it and it's gonna run apple intelligence there's no reason the apple watch should have to do it uh, or need to have a local database of apple intelligence there's no reason not right now oh i would struggle to see a more intelligent way of telling the time but yeah don't you think it's like Apple has kind of trained us into bigger screens because uh, the Ultra was like the third screen size for it. And if it had been the first one, I'm, I think I might have thought it was too big. But as it is, I really like the size of the screen. I just don't like the, the heft of the rest of it. And plus, it's a lot more expensive. So I've stayed on my Series 7. Well, there's um, this kind of... Uh, I, don't even, I, don't, I don't know if you call it a joke, but there's definitely stories on the internet of people uh who like to be terrible um partners and play tricks on their partners uh, especially through gaslighting and uh one of the horrible horrible things i've seen people do is um over time increase someone's shoe size by one size Whoa. To, until they're uh walking until they think that their feet are shrinking or something like that right so i i wonder if Apple, like you say, is kind of training us to get used to bigger watches on our arm. The, yeah. Um, at what point th- does it stop being a watch and it start being a literal risk computer? Yeah, there's a difference between training and gaslighting for this. That's horrible. <laughs> I Mind you, if you let somebody else buy your shoes all the time, aren't you asking for I mean... Well, the, the trick isn't that they're buying the shoes. It's that they're secretly replacing oh, the shoes see. with larger sizes. Okay, that's We're, even yeah. worse even more nefarious right (laughs) this is a dark episode i think but okay bring it back um people being replaced shoes being replaced it's we're getting we're we're all over stepford watches that's what we're coming to Mm. next okay do you think apple is going to make a big deal uh out of the apple watch series 10 or will they wait till next year when they 
perhaps, well, presumably a year further on, they can do more hardware things to differentiate it in some special way. I don't, I don't know. Apple Watch is actually very important to Apple, and um, I have a very strong feeling that this is the iPhone 16 and AI is going to take over at least half of the keynote, um, and then Apple Watch is going to get a snippet at the end, and that snippet's going to be Ultra. See, they they outdid themselves with Ultra. Apple Watch Ultra came out, and it was kind of perfect from the first iteration. The second iteration got a new chipset. Um there's no more room for anything. It already has 50 different sensors and buttons and things. Like, what are you going to do to the Ultra at this point? And, I, and that's great, mature out of the gate, but Apple is a company that sells things. So make people. how do you make people want to buy the new thing if there's nothing else you can add to it? And that's the same problem. It took 10 generations, but the same problem Apple Watch is facing. You can't fit anything else in there without making it bigger, and that's probably why it's getting bigger, not any other of these theories. It literally just needs more space for more things. And um, Apple's going to have to find a way to get around the blood oxygen detection situation. Um, So, I don't know. Maybe we'll see some of these sensors move to an Apple ring, and uh, Apple says you need to buy both. So, if you want heart rate detection, (laughs) I don't know. Um, It's curious to say the least right but uh, you're putting uh, you're mentioning how things put this in my mind this talk of the new watch uh, sometimes yes it's going to get new health features and then other times yeah no they aren't working yet where do we stand on that at the moment for, for health services because i'm not like, sure what uh, the thing is blood, uh, blood oxygen oh, is that the the thing blood right. oxygen. that sounds good well the well they're in the middle of um appeals uh which will take probably years at this point the way apple gets around this officially is by circumnavigating the patents by implementing the technology in a way that no longer violates massimo's patents and uh, i believe that's possible it's just they're just going to have to continue selling the apple watch series 9 and ultra 2 um until the fall with the uh blocked sensors and software and uh, maybe someday this will get settled and Apple will be able to unblock those sensors for people who hold on to their watches for a few years. But starting with the Series 10 and Ultra 3, they'll have a, a th- that's the biggest reason they need new hardware, is they'll have a way to get around those patents in the hardware and will no longer have to block that sensor, which I believe is coming. Although, obviously, that's a bunch of wasted effort on Apple's part because now Samsung's got all of these things. Um, in fact, Samsung has a, an Apple Watch now, doesn't it? Um, yeah, they have an Apple Watch uh, Ultra, yeah. actually. Yeah, so... <clears throat> Design work. Ah. <laughs> What's the? We can get in. We can get into Samsung Impact here. I think it's interesting. Um, so some years ago, William, I, I'm sure you remember, at every event. So there would be a Samsung event. There would be a Google Pixel event. Um, there would be one of the five other Android brands that are now defunct because they failed uh, events and. Um, Every single one. It felt like the Apple sphere got into a tizzy because they would watch it live. They would blog about it. They would post about it on Twitter or now, you know, Mastodon or wherever we are and uh, talk about how Apple's behind and they're missing out on these features or they should steal these features or what Samsung is doing better. And that has just slowly disappeared over the last few years to the point that yesterday's Unpacked kind of went by as as if it didn't happen. No... No Apple person really even cared that Samsung had this event. And the only people I actually saw talking about it were talking about how it was just blatant theft <laughs> throughout the keynote and uh, one new product. Um, what 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 was your response? Did you see anything? From well, my product? response is we need to throw in the word allegedly here uh, all around all of these things. Uh, I think it's actually a funny thing with scripts. You get a lot of accusations of plagiarism of scripts, and it genuinely is a coincidence of it. Things are in the air. Two writers spot the same thing or are inspired in the same way and end up with something the same. It's why we... God, years ago, wasn't it? Um, Gunfight at the OK Corral. We had two major motion pictures about exactly the same thing in the same year. And we get earthquake things, we get ship things. It happens, fine. And I'm sure it is entirely coincidental. Samsung people are probably very surprised. I bet they didn't know about the Apple Watch Ultra until people pointed to all of this. Mm-hmm. Uh, look, I'm keeping a straight face here. Work with me on what? this one. Well, 
Yeah, <clears throat> of course, allegedly, but it's just it is very s- silly uh, to look at this thing. Um, it's still a round watch, uh, but they squared off the size. So right. <laughs> uh, they even changed the lugs and how you attach um, watch bands. The uh, bands they're using in their promotions is this um, na- international orange band. Uh, it's just very clearly an Apple Watch Ultra. It's even got the Ultra name. Um, just well, odd. Uh, actually, I'll tell you what, in the chapter art for this section, it will either be the Samsung Watch Ultra, whatever they're calling it, or the Apple Watch Ultra. Who knows which it could be. That's the whole theme of this episode, isn't it? Well, People wrong, it's the kind of wrong, but yes. <clears throat> okay. uh, is this is this the Cylons? <laughs> no, so... People were getting replaced by robots, and we're all losing our minds. The, the 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 thing about this is, is it's not even a good clone, right? Like back in the day, there was this lawsuit uh, between Apple and Samsung, very public, very loud, for years, where Apple accused Samsung of basically stealing the um, idea of a smartphone that looked like a slap. A, what they call it at the time, it wasn't. It was a candy bar. That's it. The candy bar slab design um and basically that's where we get the uh, infamous picture oh, android yes. phones before iphone and after iphone and uh we there's actually a leaked manual uh for samsung designed by samsung of how to steal all of apple's uh designs basically the it was a step-by-step instruction booklet for what they wanted to take from iphone so very clearly they were um let's say inspired by apple at mm. that time and it was a big deal and that's why every event for the, for about a decade after that people were just really interested in seeing what samsung was coming out with next comparing it to apple it was this whole deal and then like i said this past event and i think the past couple of years have been like this it was just nothing nothing to talk about and uh now we're talking about how they basically made an apple watch ultra well they also made a couple other things they made a smart ring yeah. um that does heart rate detection cool uh other people do that i don't we'll see what apple does uh, because it seems that apple's going to be doing this eventually um i'm cool. quite <laughs> I, I i don't know uh it's a ring i'm i think it's nice that we're putting technology everywhere i'll take more wearables uh, i don't really have anything to say about this samsung did it first uh so i guess people on the internet can say they did it first but we'll see what apple does with it uh this is I think the smartwatch situation all over again. Um, weirdly enough, uh, the reason why I bring it up is because Samsung likes to look at Apple rumors for inspiration sometimes <laughs> and will rush out the gate with something uh, before Apple just so that just so they can say they did it first, which I think is very interesting. Uh, it's never helped them in the past, and uh, I don't think the, the ring is this particular situation, but it is kind of funny that it happens. I'm actually way. a bit disappointed because uh, looking at the list of what they've done, I thought, ooh, a ring. I mean, I've read enough Apple patents about rings to make you think that, yeah, I'd probably give it a go. But you're saying all of theirs is it, it's just a normal ring, and it does what some sort of health thing, but not much of it by the sound of it. Okay. Uh, it... We'll we'll have to see once it launches, um, because uh, honestly speaking, you can't believe keynotes anymore. Uh, <laughs> um, companies just announce things and say they do all this stuff, but once you get it, it doesn't do half of that stuff. It just seems to be the industry's trend and just over-promising, under-delivering. Um, we'll see what it actually does when it's in people's hands, but uh, right now it just looks like, honestly, that's it's this basic health sensor device. Uh, it's a complement to smartwatches. Um, I think it mostly exists, so if you want to get your heart rate data and health data uh, without your Apple Watch, that, that's a possibility. Like, you know, if Apple was to release one, right. um, that you could wear a regular watch kind of thing. Okay, and you're not selling um, me on this whole concept at all. This episode is brought to you by ExpressVPN, and I've now been using ExpressVPN for weeks, partly waiting to see if I ever witness the kind of slowing down of the internet that you often see with VPNs. After seven weeks with a stopwatch, I should probably give up. But that's about a problem that VPNs tend to have. ExpressVPN has not once slowed me down. Yet you don't buy a VPN to just not have a slower internet. You buy it for protection. The ExpressVPN company, they describe it this way, which actually made me twitch when I did it. A bit of twitch, a bit of shudder. 
They suggested going online without ExpressVPN is like leaving your laptop unattended at the coffee shop while you run to the bathroom. Most of the time they said, well, you're probably fine, but what if one day you came out of the bathroom and your laptop is gone? Now, my mind leaps, of course, to why are you running to the bathroom and just how much coffee did you have? But I think my mind goes there because I'm trying not to think about losing my MacBook Pro. Because really, I don't want to think about losing all the data that's on there. And that is really what ExpressVPN is about. Your data can be stolen. And if it isn't always as obvious as someone taking away your laptop, well, it's obviously just as bad, isn't it? Because reportedly... A hacker, one hacker, can make a thousand dollars out of selling your personal information. So it's worth it to them to put in some effort to get it. So there you are. You're logging on to what looks like that coffee shop's Wi-Fi, but it's actually a hotspot run by the man sitting behind you, and he is just waiting to get your data. With ExpressVPN turned on, he can go whistle for that data. And as I say, I've not seen any of the usual VPNs slowing down of my two Macs, my iPad on my iPhone while ExpressVPN has been on and protecting me for weeks. Secure your online data today by visiting expressvpn.com slash AI podcast. That's E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V-P-N dot com slash AI podcast. And you can get an extra three months free. Expressvpn.com slash AI podcast. And thank you to ExpressVPN for keeping my data safe and supporting the Apple Insider podcast. I'll save my money for uh, probably iPhone 16 Pro. I, I think I skipped uh, the 14, got a 15 Pro, very happy with it. I can see me going for a 16 Pro because, well, I don't really know. Apple Intelligence it's features. Galaxy. Galaxy AI, I don't know, it generates a health report. It gives you an energy oh. score. I, I don't really know what's going on. Oh, right no, there. you're pulling me back I... now. Um, yeah, <laughs> no, put it away, William. I'm not going to swap to Android just because I don't actually like Android. So, okay. Back on the real they, platform. Then, of course, Sorry, up to you. Then, of course, uh, Samsung announced a few other devices, namely smartphones. I've heard nothing about any of the uh, smartphones just to the point that they're basically um the same thing that they've released uh n no real design changes apparently the flip and fold uh are identical in every way um except for a couple of slight tweaks and they're more expensive <laughs> so i just don't, i don't really know right. what's going on over there we've um, upgraded the price okay yes right. i didn't think of that i the reason why i bring any of this up at all isn't to bash on samsung because i mean that's honestly easy to do these days that we're not really sure what apple's competitors are doing that is to say does apple even have a competitor anymore uh have they ever um I, because i remember uh, 2014 2015 era uh, i remember when um the iphone 10 came out and, uh, and samsung came out with the notch commercials and th this whole tribalism thing was going on and it was it was kind of fun kind of silly and people were having fun fighting back and forth let me be clear i don't care what phone you buy it doesn't matter uh use what works for you but at, at the end of the day it was fun comparing and contrasting seeing where the market would go because these competitors were pushing each other more or less but increasingly so it appears that apple just doesn't have an equal in the smartphone space and that isn't me trying to blow hot up air at, at, at apple or anything is not trying to like make them sound bigger than they are they're just really actually been quite good at what they do to the point that regulators are really starting to take clear attention of it and i don't i don't know what to say except we need another apple i would love it like me personally i would love if samsung or another company maybe not samsung because I, I don't know they have other issues <laughs> i'm not a big fan of their corporate uh, structure but um another apple if they could if there was another company out there that, i don't care if it's an android device i don't care if it's a new made up third operating system if nintendo made a smartphone just someone to step up to the plate and say we're going to do everything apple does but in our but with our own personal uh, uh, thing to it we're going to have a vertical ecosystem we're going to have our own um, operating system and app store with the unique design and we're going to make it so good that it's going to be you apple fans you're going to have a hard time choosing between the two we have we have yet to see that emerge i've we've seen the nothing phone we've seen 
um, all of these failed uh, smartphones that are supposed to be iPhone killers come and go. And to be fair, that none of them have ever even tempted me a little bit because mostly they're running Android. And I don't want to run Android. But what? What? Where? Where is the Apple competitor? Where is the? Where is the iPhone killer that we were promised so many times by Wall Street? And uh, at this point, yes, Apple doesn't have a global majority market share, but they're slowly ticking that direction. Um, it, it, in a infinite timeline, Apple will have a majority market share because they keep taking it from Android year after year. So, what happens when Apple? takes over this market in a way that isn't like where they truly are the monopoly that is bad for everyone honestly i like apple and i like their success i like seeing them get more money to make more things that are cool that i get to use i i like their place in the market but what happens when they are no longer challenged by anyone does that not make apple worse is that not worse for customers that's a good point that's quite a depressing point really except uh, one thing i realized maybe you and i are closer on something than i thought because in a way i've i've thought of you as a kind of a hardware guy i mean not as hard and fast as say um apple inside is mike worthily hardware down the line if you have a problem he has a hardware solution to it if you give me the same problem i tend to have a software solution to it because that's just that's the way my mind goes every time a new phone comes out that is supposedly an iphone killer and you hear about the features of it it tends to come down to uh the hardware side of it and at the heart of it the software is always android and that's the bit i don't mm. like um so that's why i can never uh switch over by design by design no one can touch apple's vertical integration no one can touch because no one else is doing what apple is doing not even google with pixel um they they, they tried but android got in their way i wonder if you know this duopoly uh, it, it it it's not great right like i i think it's a failure of capitalism that we got to this point where there's only two options and now it's to the point where the androids race to the bottom which we've seen since like forever they uh there there there's no middle anymore right there's for android there's only two things the super super low end device that is commodified to the point of being cheap as cheap as possible that is that is that is its purpose the most popular smartphone in the world costs two hundred dollars right that is android's key demographic and then they also have these super premium devices that they sell to their whales, uh, which is a gambling term. Oh, right? Right. I thought you were being very rude about the size. <laughs> well, no, whale, in, in gambling, whales are basically, casinos don't need everyone to lose money. They just need a few people to lose a lot oh. of money. Um, so, uh, say, so, so Android has the same mentality. They sell $200 smartphones and they sell... And, and okay, I know people are going to email me or whatever saying, "Oh, there's a six hundred dollars Android smartphone." That's not the market, though. They don't really sell those. Um, they do, but not in the quantities that we're talking. Uh, the best selling smartphones in Android, is, if you specifically look at, look at Samsung, are Samsung's two hundred dollar models and twelve hundred plus dollar models. Right, the middle is just gone, and Apple has taken their cake. Right, they Apple's running that middle. Everything from the four hundred dollar iPhone SE up to the thousand dollar iPhone, huge market potential, taking that over. And then Samsung just released an eighteen hundred dollar flippable phone. Just, I get it. It's fun to experiment with technology. I wish Apple would experiment a little bit more. That's not what I'm saying. It's just the way that this capitalistic market works has created a vacuum there's no competition apple is operating on its own on its own place android's operating on its own on its own uh strengths and that's it there's no one challenging each other anymore and i think that's dangerous overall for technology and for technology lovers eighteen hundred dollars for a phone well i suppose i remember gasping when the iphone 10 was announced as being a thousand dollars i remember thinking if that's a success apple will never go back under a thousand and it was a success so Hmm. Well, William, don't do the math, but I have a oh, one terabyte iPhone 15 Pro Max, so right, yeah, it's it's a it's a market that exists. It's just 
I, I, I don't, I just don't know what's happening anymore in this market, but, but it, if anything, the enthusiasts not discussing it is the key tell here. You know, nobody cares anymore. We found what we want and we're sticking to our brands, which is fine. The tribalism, the wars have, uh, they, we've, we've had a truce. Our leaders have met and shook hands and said, you do you, we'll do us, whatever. And that's kind of like, I think, where we landed. And that's all fine because it was all silly to be tribal in the first place. But at the same time, I don't know, just what <laughs> what are we doing here anymore? Is, is it, All these questions of Apple's innovation. I personally think Apple's still very inventive and innovative in a lot of ways. And Samsung's doing their own thing, too. It's just... I don't think it can t- can continue forever without someone pushing, mm. without someone threatening them, right? They need an existential threat, and that existential threat shouldn't be regulation. It should be a competitor. Okay. But anyway, yeah. we've gone on long enough. I would love to hear everyone's thoughts on this discussion. Uh, this can continue on social media. That'd be you can good. Find me on Mastodon, yeah. of course. Just yes. Yeah, I I. I think it's a very interesting topic. We could have a whole show about it. it. It's just, you know, we can make a show 100 episodes about the rise and fall of technology brands and uh, who's competing with but who. How but, about for now, though? We kind of pull it back to, because um, I am really interested and I would go further, but just at the moment, we seem to have a, a flood of uh, iPhone 16 and 16 Pro rumors and 17 and 18. And actually, earlier today, as we record this, there's rumors about the iPhone 19 and things. Uh, if this is all there is, iPhone and nobody else kind of matters in a way, at least to some people, including me. Uh, what do you think of the latest stuff with the iPhone 16? Because I can't remember what model 15 do you have? I have the Pro Max and I, I'm going to stick with the big phone. It's It's about the screen real estate. I accidentally bought the pro size phone once and I stuck with it. It was fine. Um, but I, I'm definitely a big phone person. I'm always going to buy the biggest one, especially since it seems it's not every year, but sometimes Apple makes that the phone to get yeah. all the special features like the, uh, Tetra Prism lens. Um, yeah. I, I'm I'm sticking with Pro Max or Ultra or whatever you want to I'm call actually, it. I'm actually, I would have said I'm the other way around because uh, back a long time ago now, the iPhone XR, would it have been? The, the one just before the 12, which is probably the 11. But around that era, I bought the larger one and it was too big for it. I loved it when I was using it, but just carrying it around and, and doing short things on it was a pain. And I went, actually for economic reasons more than anything else, I went to the smaller pro size, whatever the next year was. And that was perfect for me. And I found I really liked it. Except last year with the zoom lens, with the Tetra Prism, I was standing in um, an Apple store in London, looking at the two of them, wondering if I'd made the right decision. And in my hand there, actually, the iPhone 15 Pro Max didn't seem that much bigger. So that plus the fact that it has been, mm-hmm. I thought maybe the 16 Pro Max, but now I'm hearing that, well, the Pro will get the, the big zoom that the Max had last year. There won't be anything extra in that way for the Pro Max. And the screen sizes, um, I think the Pro Max is supposed to go a bit bigger, but so is the Pro. So where's the sweet spot going to me what are they doing to my head apple come on <laughs> we we've had a weird spot and this gets back to the earlier discussion about innovation and challenges and technology uh we've had a weird spot in iphone cycles um the screen is as good as it's going to get for now uh there's nothing better than oled really that's uh in the price range that we're talking of course there's micro oled uh and stuff like that so p- pixel densities can always get better Brightness can get better, sure. Um, refresh rates can always improve. That's not what I mean. It's just we've hit kind of a pinnacle in display technology as far as we've, and we're perfectly in the middle of the curve of affordability and technology. So we're not really going to see a big screen changes other than maybe slight changes in size for a while, I think. Um, the port, you know, maybe they could put a Thunderbolt port in there, but right now it's USB. How many people are really even plugging their phone in anymore with MagSafe? We could always see improvements to that. But design-wise, it's a rectangle with a screen. Uh, there's not much going on there. That's why people are talking about foldables being the next thing. We've kind of hit... I, I'm not, not going to use the term peak iPhone because I think that's a stupid term. But we've definitely hit a uh, plateau that, you know, once technology changes again in a couple of years, we'll shoot past and have more crazy designs and changes. Uh, it's just right now the iPhone, I think, is as designed and as it's going to get. So that's why we're looking at... The last few years, the improvements are the chipset and the camera. 
the chipset and the camera every time. This year again, chipset and camera, and we're talking about Apple Intelligence, and we're talking about a camera that takes better photos. Those are very important because for users, the number one feature is the camera, period. And as and that display is already gorgeous, really. Like, what are we going to do? We're, we can't make it better than real life. So the camera's getting better, taking more magnificent photos, the artificial intelligence getting better, doing more for you, you know, helping improve the camera system further with computational photography, and the chipset getting better to feed into that as well. Longer battery lives, better gaming, yada, yada, yada. So that's where we are in this in this field. So that's why maybe people feel a little less enthused about technology these days because the upgrades are iterative. We're not seeing an iPhone 7 to an iPhone 10 jump uh, anymore. And I, don't even, I can't even imagine what that would look like today if we got an iPhone X2 kind of jump uh in performance like the iphone 20 is it going to somehow be this radical change i have i can't even imagine what that would look like but uh what do, what are you most interested in in the iphone 16 rumors so far i think the the business of that it's in some way going to hardware help apple intelligence therefore apple intelligence needs hardware acceleration therefore the fan i've got at the moment will do it but won't do it as well so that's what sends me down that line but actually my mind's split in two directions again. One is Apple intelligence is going to be in everything. And the other one is that's about the iPhone that's coming. We do have things happening now. And I have a complaint about the beta releases. And I don't know who to complain mm. to. So I'm going to say it to you instead, which is this. I read a headline somewhere saying that Safari's new highlight feature was out on the Mac and developer beta 3. And I ran to my office to upgrade from beta 2 to beta 3 and it doesn't appear to be here is that just because it's only in u.s english and i'm not in the states or basically did somebody release a new story early what is it um you're holding it wrong okay right <laughs> nice callback there so okay. i, I the, so actually um highlights have been there for uh the last few betas what? um this the newest one in beta three has a table of contents and summaries as well. Uh, summaries was in the last beta. Table of contents is in this beta. So it's slowly improving. It does not need Apple intelligence. There's so many conflated things here. People think need Apple intelligence that yeah. don't. Uh, and these features keep creeping out. And they're like, oh, Apple intelligence here. It's like, no, that's actually very simple. You don't need Apple intelligence to do that. That's algorithm based, or they're deriving it from something else. But um, yeah, no, no Apple intelligence yet, but highlights are a totally separate thing and are absolutely available. But uh, right now it appears it's based on um, information available to, um, well, <laughs> AppleBot. Uh, yeah. I've found the best way to get, if you want to check out the highlights feature. I do, yes. Is, there's two options. You can either find an, I, I've been doing this Apple Insider articles. Look up my um, Keychron K, uh, K1 review. That one has a highlight uh, attached to it. Um, that one's old. That's That one's been a while. Uh, I can find a link. But anyway, so that one has a highlight and a table of contents. Uh, there's also, uh, so any older articles, you'll, you'll be able to find that there. Uh, Apple Insider or other websites, as long as they're being crawled by AppleBot. Um, okay. Because the reason why that is is because uh, the information needs to be available um, on, uh, I guess, server side for it to be called down. Sure. I think the Apple intelligence side of this and why people are getting confused is that the Apple intelligence will do this live. So you'll open a brand new web page and it will give you a generated summary and a generated table of contents without it needing to be an Apple bot. But as long as Apple has crawled these uh, older web pages. Um, that information is available to everyone and doesn't need Apple intelligence. I think that's the separation. Um, you can also go to certain hotel websites as long as that website has a, a outgoing link or an address to the hotel um, with contact information, and that will produce a hyperlink to um, Apple Maps. Okay, I'm going to have to stop you there like because that. none of this is working for me. Uh, I mean, I went to that hotel yesterday, I mean, to the website, to the hotel yesterday, because that's the one Apple showed, does nothing. I just looked at those articles you've said, and for me, nothing. So either it's not available outside the States, it might be or you. it is me, which would be, I mean, 
It's mildly embarrassing, but I'd get over it. Um, <laughs> not you, but you, like it might be because you're not in the United That's, States. Oh, this right. might be a US only. Well, thing. Hello, how about just for my peace of mind, if nothing else, <laughs> I've gone to your Keychron um, review. There it is, and actually, I meant to read that, although it's quite old now. I'll look at it. <laughs> Um, there it is in Safari. Goodness. Up in the title bar, it says AppleCider.com, and to the far left of it, there's an icon where it used to be Reader, and now it's so, well Reader-ish. I click that, I get a Zoom option, Find Website Settings, and Show Reader. I go into Reader. Well, how that's you it. nothing else happens. How you know if there's a summary or if there's a anything yeah. is the little square guy turns into has uh, purple sparkles around oh. it. <laughs> that's how you know that there is generate there's some kind of content inside of that button so right you, in that case i am being denied it because i'm not in the states denied that denied the europe well, stuff also, i don't know also i'm also attempting to do this from the vision pro which i uh, doesn't have any of these features at oh, all, okay so. right um i do feel that one's more on you than this but i am actually slightly disappointed there i was looking forward to this i might actually just reset my mac to u.s uh, region to see what happens but it's surprising how much that affects so maybe when i'm ready but okay at least whoever it was i read the headline of headline of they didn't lie to me they aren't these imposters in the fake tuia thingy they're not the board looking at me okay but i'm still missing out while i'm missing out uh, I do know some things are happening with Apple Intelligence. Like um, I have seen that at least the leaked screenshots showing what it's going to look like in the settings page. Have you come across this as well it's from the Xcode uh, simulator? Oh, so I've I've seen these um, leaks go around. I uh, haven't really paid that much attention to it because honestly, I I don't care. <laughs> I don't care, and it'll it'll be in my hands when it is okay. uh, settings menus fun um does that mean then you also cool. you're not that fussed about the rumored touch screen uh that code has paid for it in tvos 18 okay okay so uh, uh my brain was on apple intelligence the <laughs> speaking of which um i added the keychron the specific review that right, i just you. checked in my mac right. that's why i was just i'll make sure that's in the show uh, notes does so it does have summaries and table of contents on my Mac Safari and my iPad Safari. So uh, if you want to try that, William, while I, I talk, uh, you can. Terrific. But, um, so you're mm -hmm. speaking to the um, rumored new Apple Home Hub, right? So there was a new discovery in <laughs> TVOS 18 that suggests that there's touchscreen capabilities uh, in, uh, in the code, right? Um, there is no touchscreen Apple TV device because there's not really any touchscreen televisions uh, where you would hook up an Apple TV. Uh, I, I believe if you hooked up an Apple TV to a touchscreen monitor, it would just do nothing. So that's interesting. Um, there are actually several rumors I've gathered here around such a device that I think are uh, have been disparate. I don't know how many people have connected the dots here. But William, I want I want you to uh, let me know if my take might be correct here. But I think they're all the same thing. There's a rumor about this touchscreen um, TVOS interface. There's rumors about HomePods with a display. <clears throat> but the third thing that seems to have been forgotten is Apple's robotics team is working on a home robot mm. that consists of a monitor arm that is able to intelligently move a display around. Could these all be the same device? Yes, of course, absolutely. I mean, you say it that way, it's like Steve Jobs back at the iPhone launch. Uh, it's um, it's a widescreen iPod with touch controls. It's an internet communicator. It's something else. Are you getting it? It's all one thing. Yeah, I could easily see that now you've said it. But a home robot that moves a screen around, um, I kind of you know tune out when that happens. I mean... How much am I going to well, need it to move? Think about it. Imagine an, because this is where it is in my head. Imagine an iMac G4, mm -hmm. right? Is that is that the, the one, one with on the, the, it's on like the, a flower, um, the, the, the screen that moved and followed you around in the adverts? Yes. Yeah. Well, that in the adverts, but in real life, it was basically a base with the computer and then a arm that went up to the yes. monitor, correct? Yeah, and surprisingly big. 
actually. You, you say little because you think it's little, but in person, it's quite huge. But yes, it looked very yeah. good. I, I wanted one. It's adorable, yeah. I think. But um, yeah, I mean, I would love to have one just to have like somewhere in my house. Uh, but anyway, I, I imagine something like that where the base is a HomePod and then this arm that comes up is holding an iPad like screen and then it's able to track where you are in the room. So the screen is always facing you and you can speak to it to get information like recipes like this would be great in the kitchen. Imagine if, you know, we're, we're all these rich people out here in Apple commercials and they have this, you know, lovely kitchen island and they're able to walk around and this monitors following them around with the recipe on the screen and you can tell, talk to it and uh, it's playing Ted Lasso in the corner and uh, William averts his eyes because he doesn't want to see it. And I think it, it sounds interesting. Could that be a product that Apple would pitch and try to sell? No one has tried to do this yet as, as far as I, I know. Okay, I know there are moving cameras and there are different technologies kind of like this, but Apple, I think, putting it all together would be one of the first to, to attempt such a thing. My, I, I'm kind of against because part of me can't, can't see how very much useful it's going to be. I, I maybe I just have a small kitchen, but there are like three spaces I will be in. I'm quite. In fact, I use an iPad for the recipes now, and I can see it from any place I want in the kitchen. But in its favour. I noticed uh, during the WWDC keynote, uh, Apple was listing its platforms, like obviously macOS and iOS and uh, VisionOS, but in that list was Audio and Home, as if it were Audio and Home OS for it. I, I think they are treating it as a platform, and right now they're not doing much with it as a platform beyond the Apple TV 4K and the HomePod. So a new item, I can easily believe that. So why not this? According... According to rumors, um, back when Apple Car was uh, disbanded, there there was a suggestion that Apple's priority for the next big thing was going to be in the automotive industry or the home. And now that Apple Car is gone, they're shifting all their focus. So the platform that they're focusing on for the future, the robotics division especially, is Apple Home. And that's why I think we're not far away from seeing that home audio and home turn into home OS. Uh, and we have seen home OS referenced yes. before in code. So all the pieces are coming together. This is this is why I like this job. It's 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 fun to finally see it all uh, resolve into something. And I'm, I'm excited to see Apple resubmit their commitment to the home because it seems like lately it's kind of been put to the wayside they they do have segments about home but it's about home pod and apple tv they briefly mentioned that smart homes exist and light bulbs turn on great but they haven't really made a real commitment to the home and i wonder if this won't help resurface that especially with a new commitment to matter and uh devices like that apple did mention robotic vacuums but none of the other things i want um an apple home connected uh washing machine right so where, I know it sounds silly, but come on, um, where is this device and where does it land? I agree with you. It does feel like maybe it's a bit superfluous. Like why, why have it? I don't know. There's a million ways you could pitch this, put it in the center of a round dining room table and everyone could play Monopoly. I, I, don't, I don't know. It just, it, it could turn to each person as they take oh, a turn. Ap sure. Apple like, replaces the uh, lazy Susan. Do you actually is that a British <laughs> or an American expression? Do you know what that is? No, that that's that is right. a thing that everyone. Okay, there you are. Look at that new boundaries for Apple. I just we say all this and it makes so much sense, but then the references we're hearing are to Apple's robotics section, and you say robotics, and I'm thinking K9 or R2D2 or something, and I don't know that I want either of those in my living room while I'm watching. Well, Shrek we Day. have robots. Yeah. Yeah, robots today are vacuum cleaners. Uh, they kind of taken over that term, mm. as dumb as it may be. That's that's what we have. Is if you if anyone refers to a robot in real life, it's a it's a vacuum cleaner usually. Um, there are these little companion guys, which is apparently also rumored to be worked on by Apple. It's some kind of robot companion that follows you around on like treads or something. Um, sure great 10 years maybe we'll see something similar to that that i mean i'm sure that's a fun toy that they're working on in there but come on uh the monitor does make sense i think it won't be too exaggerated or too whimsical i think it'll just be a simple monitor with the ability to slightly turn 
uh, within a 180 degree field of view and maybe adjust its height. If you're standing over it to cut vegetables because it's you're at the counter, it'll look up at you so you can see the monitor better. If you step away to get an ingredient, it'll pan down to let you see this display better, right? Like those kinds of simple movements, it's tracking where you are in the room, um, making sure that what TV show you're watching or what recipe you're looking at or whatever is always in view. And of course, you can always turn that off. Maybe it'll be a button physically on there. Oh, no buttons. Uh, or there could be a command. Who knows? But this is something I could see being the next evolution of these products. Um, some are suggesting this is also where Apple Intelligence could come into play. I don't believe Apple Intelligence belongs on HomePod. See, last week's episode, it doesn't make sense. But a device like this with a more powerful chipset that's more personalized and understands who it's talking to could definitely make use of a stronger chipset, especially if it has a display. So lots of ifs and maybes here, but I'm interested in seeing what's next for Apple technology. Earlier this week, I had to stay over somewhere else and I got out my iPad and its magic keyboard and I cannot work out why the keyboard feels wrong it's just slightly sticky and it's because before i went there i cooked a, like a slight chicken curry there. a slight chicken curry it was a very chicken curry mm-hmm. and at some point i must have splashed that keyboard because as well as the stickiness also the bottom of the screen i suddenly noticed was slightly damp and i'm wondering does my ipad leak and all these things and now i'm thinking i don't want to put this in the kitchen anymore so yes maybe i'll buy yeah. a, a, a well, it's Apple. It's bound to be a very cheap, disposable kind of kitchen robot, isn't it? This sounds like a thousand dollars. If it's if it's all of that stuff, um, I, there'll probably be two models. There'll probably be a static model where it's just a screen and a speaker, kind of like our um, image that we've kind of just yeah portmanteaued yes. together. <laughs> uh, uh, but then there's probably the possibility of the robot version, which is like five hundred dollars more, which. Uh, could be like the airpods max version i suppose um very expensive i i guarantee it but i don't know I, but with all this talk about uh apple intelligence and what's next i did want to bring up a little snippet um apple intelligence siri the the new oh i did it again the new design of siri and uh the, where the rainbow comes up around your phone and it's so intelligent it understands when you correct yourself all of that not coming until at least iOS 18.4, which would be spring 2025. How does that make you feel? A little upset? A tiny bit, yes. I mean, we knew it wasn't coming immediately, but is it silly? I just want that uh, the ring around the screen thing. Well, I also want Siri to work, but it does look very nice. Okay, I tell you what, um, that's almost certainly next year. All, a lot of stuff we talked about today either didn't exist at all, like the original stuff with the fake me and the fake writing but um most of the stuff has been way off in the future there is something i'd like to end on a couple of things that we know are coming from apple and we know when because they're on apple tv plus and i was ecstatic to learn that slow horses is back for a new season in early september are you a fan yet i haven't watched it yet i understand it's uh very good it's definitely on my to-do list and it's one of those shows that because they're filming it two seasons seasons at a time it feels like um you don't have to worry about it going away like other shows that have uh tragically ended early um, well i can tell you i i but, do know that they uh this will be the fourth season and i can't i don't know when the pickups were for it but i know they were working one season and at least part of the next season ahead before they got a pickup uh partly so that right. should they get the pickup they could go straight away uh into production and things like that but it was still a brave move because apple is cancelling things um i just i i love the fact that they're doing i think it's a particularly special show and i think the makers are great of it so i'm excited well, we've yeah, but we've reached the point briefly mm-hmm. we've reached the point in apple tv where when it first came out, and this was 2019, yeah. my goodness. Um, so f- we're coming up on five years this this fall yeah. winter. Uh, I believe November right. was when it re- debuted. Um, five years. So when Apple started Apple TV Plus, it, the joke was there's only like six things to watch, and that was true. Um, and they've slowly padded that out. And now, if you subscribe to Apple TV Plus and you've never watched anything there before, you wouldn't watch everything within the. No. Uh, uh, you you would not 
have the time to watch everything within the trial period. You would have to be a paying customer to watch everything. And even then, it would take you a very long time. There's so much content there now. Multiple seasons of multiple amazing shows, multiple movies, documentaries, so much stuff. But it seems that their strategy at the front was to attract creators, attract big names like Reese Witherspoon and all these people, um, Sony executives that are working there to help put all this together. To attract that, they had to guarantee out of the box, hey, we're going to sign you three seasons. You're going to tell your whole story. Dickinson, doesn't matter how well it does streaming-wise, you get to do a whole three-season arc guaranteed. That kind of promise is huge, and it will attract all sorts of people and writers and actors. Yes, um, but it's also limited. Uh, no question they did it, but yeah. they don't do it much. Uh, I mean, and also they're not the first people well, to it do it. Well, it went away. Um, but, no, this is an industry yeah, thing. But it's sure. a very expensive but now, but, industry thing, yes. Yes. Well, that's why with the problem with Jon Stewart, they went ahead and paid their third season, um, even though they never made it. So the, the, there was money set aside for these projects, right, to get them off the ground. Well, they are now firmly off the ground. They're competitive. Uh, they're ahead of streaming like Paramount Plus by some numbers. Um, doing well enough, considering their content library and their price. So now, today we see Apple at this point where they're not making those same deals. They're being more competitive. They're canceling shows after a season. They're not being as harsh as Netflix, but they're definitely nothing is sacred, right? So like uh, the Big Door Prize yeah. won't get its third season, even though it seemed like a three season arc. There's a lot going on there. I'm I'm a person who likes. If you find a show that you like, I want to be able to continue it. And I hate, I always, like anyone, I hate it when it gets canceled. Apple felt like a safe place. It's no longer really the case. It's no longer the safe space. But we do have some good news, at least for one a very important property that I enjoyed. Severance is coming back in January, finally. Well, I can add to that then. Silo is coming back as well, although it hasn't been officially announced. Absolutely. We just know that production has finished. I mean, actually, there have been shows that didn't make it to where even after production was finished. You were saying about uh, Apple not being as harsh as Netflix. Disney has killed things off after they were made and things and, and removed <laughs> them from libraries when they were already right. there. So Apple hasn't done anything like that. Yeah, but, you know, give them time. It's just a whole different place to be in. I, I did want to know one last thing to close on. Um, you're you're a you're you are the British. Um, yes. Do you watch F one? Do you care? Well, I'm a bad person to ask because sport just is meaningless to me. <laughs> I, I I know plenty of Fair people enough. who watch racing, and I know about F one from it. So I know it's. Uh, I mean, I only know about um, NASCAR, for example, because I think it was was it in the Dukes mm -hmm. of Hazard once or something, and I wondered what it was. Sure. Uh, there's no exposure of NASCAR here that I'm aware of. There is of F1, so it is bigger, and there's going to be a film about it, which I really am not rushing to see, well, but I'm sure it'll be very good. Well, NASCAR was very much in my wheelhouse. I grew up watching it, right? Dale Earnhardt fan junior fan until uh i just didn't it, there wasn't really a falling off point it's just i stopped yeah. watching it i don't know uh, i think that happens a lot well you you grow up I, I watched a lot of wwe growing up and kind of stopped watching it um, i don't know what wwe but is then there's a uh, worldwide uh engineering no uh uh well it used to be <laughs> they used to be called wwf but the world wildlife federation had oh to, uh, yes yes i remember name. that now right uh, okay <laughs> it's it's the wrestling it's the wrestling uh, show yes okay yeah i forget what it stands for someone uh, world wrestling uh, wrestling worldwide Fiction. entertainment i don't know oh, I did that, but, but yeah. anyway okay. wrestling right. uh, american style um f1 cool i i i, I like the cars looks looks great they drive crazy fast and uh, almost die a lot um very exciting sport right now uh huge because of a netflix documentary and like there's this there's just this zeitgeist around f1 and it, apple accidentally seemingly landed on it because i think they ordered this forever yeah. ago uh but brad pitt cool um i think this is going to be a fun one i'm going to be watching it because they went out and got f2 cars which uh Funny enough, it's they're just slower, but they look the same. Um, right. Strapped cameras to them and filmed actual cars driving on tracks. This isn't, you know, sitting on a wind turbine with a fan blowing on Brad Pitt's hair to simulate him driving around. Like, they actually have 
uh, footage of cars on tracks, which is not always mm. how they do yeah. things. Um, I think Days of Thunder might have done that with Tom Cruise with uh, the NASCAR movie, right? Like, there's ch- times and chances for that to happen, yes. Uh, but it's was notable, Apple was present during a F1 race, uh, during, like, the championship or whatever, uh, filming parts of that like i guess scenery for their for their movie which is cool but like yeah actual vehicles it, it, i'm sure there's gonna be you know some cgi ish scenes and, and and turns and stuff like that and brad pitt isn't actually going to be driving an f1 car but um i think because they're filming i think with imax as well it's going to be a very stunning movie to see and i think that's going to be fun to watch I'm excited well i the way i see it they missed a trick not calling it a uh, pit stop hey yeah. Anyway, so apart from his name isn't Brad Pitt in the movie. Oh, you see, they just didn't even try. Whereas, apart from in front of Apple TV Plus and a game console, I'm sure. Where can people find you when they want? As always, Mastodon. Um, that's where I'm most active. Uh, you can also email me. I've got a lot of good emails lately asking about different questions. Uh, I had someone ask about um adding music to your home uh, to your desktop or something like that i'm gonna have to look hmm. into that but uh definitely getting a lot of good emails and i appreciate those love hearing from the guys don't write, write in and say hello you don't have to apologize i've had a couple of people say sorry for bothering you no please like i i love getting the emails uh we love the reviews coming in please keep reviewing the show it helps us uh and i like seeing what you guys have to say as always comment on anything we said in the show out on the interwebs we want to hear what you have to say and uh give us suggestions about what to talk about if you ever have any ideas we're always happy to hear it plus the apple insider plus segment later as well throw some ideas for that yeah i was thinking about that apple insider plus i'm really into what we're doing this week and there's an obvious sequel to come which you'll hear about in a moment if you are a subscriber um apple insider subscribers you can get to us through patreon on apple podcast subscription and it's extended and ad free and we talk about things that aren't in the news but are part of what we why we get involved in apple while we're so into this ecosystem but anyway uh for finding me um email is always the way although actually sorry i'm a bit behind this week Lovely emails queued up for me to enjoy and respond to. In fact, actually, that's what I'm going to go do next. So that's it for this week. Thank you very much for listening. Um, remember, there's also always more on HomeKit Insider every Monday. And also, thank you to our sponsor, ExpressVPN. And we'll see you next week. <laughs>